Hi, I'm Nia Crisofoli with Informa Connect Life Sciences, here with Dr. Jer Brophy, the Executive Vice President of Biopharma Production, Avantor. To start off, can you tell us briefly what Avantor does in this space? Sure. So we make uh, material inputs for biopharmaceutical production, all the way from ingredients for fermentation through chemicals and solutions for downstream processing, and then excipients for fill finish and formulation. And we underpin that by expertise in process development and scale-up, and then further by uh, single-use components like the Vantra fluid handling manifolds and the Master Flex uh, brand of uh, peristaltic pumps. All right, and what steps can be taken by biomanufacturers in light of today's supply chain challenges with raw material availability? I think it's been a real challenge for the ages over the last couple of years as we've gone through the pandemic, and I also think the supply chain held up pretty well. We haven't heard about large-scale uh, problems with uh, biopharmaceutical uh, availability. So although it was stressed and although companies, you know, really worked really hard to make sure that all our customers were resolved and ourselves and our competitors, the supply chain held up pretty well. Nonetheless, there's real opportunities for improvement. And what I see now the industry being much more aware of and willing to incur expense on is providing uh, redundancy. So multiple sites that can be qualified for materials, uh, new sources of materials, second sourcing of materials, holding inventory in geographic localities. And as a supplier in the space, we're very carefully and uh, eagerly working with our, our, our customers to make sure these things happen. So we're expanding our position in Europe, in uh, the Netherlands and in Ireland, and also in Singapore and Asia, so our global customers have access to the materials they need in a timely fashion. Okay, and what is the latest progress in the expansion of cell and gene therapies? And more broadly speaking, are these types of therapies continuing to grow? I think they are. Um, what we're seeing now is real clinical success for autologous CAR T therapies, and we saw an example, some examples of those this morning. We're seeing them now move into second line uh, treatments, uh, and this means that they will be the standard of care. So for uh, a range of liquid tumors, that's already the case, and we're now seeing you know new therapeutic areas starting to be addressed as well. Uh, from as varied as, as lupus to we saw you know some recent publications on cardiac fibrosis. So you know the whole therapeutic range of cell therapies continues to grow and in the light of that clinical success and reimbursement we can only expect greater things. Gene therapy may even grow more quickly. We've seen a, a lot of significant approvals in the last six months for really prevalent diseases like sickle cell anemia, beta thalassemia. We're seeing big clinical expectations for Duchenne muscular dystrophy. And the whole area of gene therapy, probably from a process point of view, is being advantaged by the focus on viral vectors, some of which has come through from the COVID vaccine. So uh, I think there's gonna be an acceleration of gene therapies uh, being approved and coming up for approval in the next year. And what are the major scale-up challenges for cell and gene therapies? I think it's still the case that there are still quite underdeveloped operational processes. In cell therapy, the biggest risk and the biggest area for opportunity still is in the use of closed system and in automation. Uh, there are too many times in autologous CAR-T where an operator has to open, say, a fermentation bag and make an addition or a subtraction. And each of those is a significant failure mode that needs to be addressed and, and can only, if we can address those, it can only lead to process improvements. In gene therapy, it's, it's still the case that the processes are, are not as, if, as efficient as they could be. Um, the HEC-293 transductions, the cell expansions, the vector expansions, the ratio of full to empty caps, it still are areas where there can be significant process improvements. And I fully expect those to come through over the next couple of years. Okay, well, thank you so much for your time and thanks for your insights. It was great having you here. Thanks, Mia.